Hey, people! Zarthwomp here, and welcome to the first episode of my new Let's Play, Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy, the first entry in the Jack and Daxter series. So anyways, after the marathon that was the Ape Escape 1 playthrough, as well as the exercise in psychological torture that was Crash Bash, I felt that it would be best to play a chill platformer for the next playthrough, and I couldn't think of any game better than this one. Essentially, when it comes to the first Jack and Daxter game, the only, the best way I can describe it is essentially a chill ver a chiller version of the first Banjo Kazooie game. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, yeah, as you can see, basically here are my recent files. Yeah, we're gonna be recording over this one that I was doing just yesterday. Yeah, that I was using for the practice playthrough, just streaming it yesterday. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Because they're freaking rocks! Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Ego, one of the wisest men on the planet. So it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that build this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Tarnation, do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right, and then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled 
with Dark Eco. Rock, old man! Are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a ham going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there before I turn you both into ferns. Yeah, you gotta love that Des the Menace, Mr. Wilson dynamic between Daxter and Samos. Just basically, I hate to move that eco, that eco stuff, and turn to you! <laughs> okay, but anyways, let's just go in. I need to adjust the sound, just because the, the sound effects can be a little on the louder side in this game. Okay, turn it down to 50. Okay, there we go. Just want to make sure we're all good. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure. Sorry about my paranoia. So anyways, in, as, in regards to the controls of this game, basically square is punch, circle button does a spin attack. The spin attack is really good for just overall attacking. The punch is more or less if you just want to get some momentum and move forward. <sighs> Got blown into the control stick. The analog stick is used to move, though the D-pad actually has no purpose in this game. You can all, you can basically do a jump, you can jump with the X button, double jump with by pressing the X button again. Triangle button puts you into a first-person view, which is really good for aiming and just overall looking around. Though the real magic comes in the shoulder buttons. Basically, by pressing the R1 or the L1 button, Jack will do a roll. This is a little roll, nothing much. But if you ch but if you jump at the end of the roll, then basically you do a long jump. If you crouch, if you if you just press the button, you will crouch. You can crawl, though you really don't ever need to crawl. If you press the square yeah. button, you can do a jump out of it. You can also do a high jump. If you do a punch and then jump, you can get interrupted by Kira. Anyways, as stated before, you can all yeah. Basically, you have two ways of doing the uppercut. If you jump, if you press the square button while jumping, you will actually do a ground pound. Though. If you press the X button after you hit the ground, you can basically bounce up even higher. Essentially, this is the exact same height as a high jump. So basically, just you can really chain things together and you can really move. Okay, so anyways, I'm just gonna turn off the vibration. Forgot that vibrations were on by default. Okay, there we go. Just because I'm not a big fan of just I'm not a big fan of controller vibrations because it just bothers my hands. So anyways, Green Eco, this is the health. Just by default, you will have three hits. However, if you collect 50 more pieces of Green Eco, just one big blob or 50 little ones, you get an extra fourth hit, an extra third hit, technically. These floating egg-shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. So anyways, there are 2,000 uh, precursor orbs in this game. However, you do not need to actually do any of the precursor or power cells in order to complete the game. Just throw around 15 or so of them. 
So anyways, just collect them if you want. It's though it's not imperative. It looks like a baseball. Okay, so anyways. This game works on autosave, so you're gonna see the memory card logo. And a notification. Thought there was a notification that would be saying that. Oh yeah, there's the notification where it's like, this is an autosave! So anyways, these boxes here, these contain scout flies. Scout flies are essentially this game's version of Jinjos, where if you collect seven of them, you get a power cell. Power cells acting like the star slash jiggies of this game. So anyways, over there, that is Blue Eco. Though we'll get an explanation for that right now. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. But now just, but you know, whenever I see that intro cutscene, I can't help but wonder, is Samos just having conversations with the rocks? Is he like, oh look at, hello big Rocky, how is your day? How each blue eco cluster you pick up increases the time you can use its power. So anyways, Blue Eco, it has another feature to it, hey, where you, found one of my you can basically break I open boxes and you can just power. run through. But the lurkers must have captured them all. Yeah, basically it breaks boxes automatically and draws in objects. It also works on precursor orbs, so yeah. You, that's a great way just to go and just quickly get collectibles like those boxes. I horribly failed to just try and get them all in one go. No vent tutorial! This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling Blue Eco through your body. Yeah, so now we can actually avoid one of the, tut one of the tutorials. However, we'll, we'll do it just so we can get the orbs. That's a Blue Eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters. This vent will give you a full charge of Blue Eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. So anyways, in terms of Eco, Blue Eco is arguably the most prevalent in the game as far as utility goes. Because basically just getting overall speed boosts, drawing in objects, as well as just activating Precursor Tech. Good work! The Blue Eco caused the door to open. With Blue Eco, you can breathe energy into all kinds of precursor artifacts that have lain dormant for years. Now, now Jack, you're not allowed to move until I tell you about the health system. A type of eco. Pick up 50 small green ecos or one big green one to increase your health. So anyways... Yeah, basically, you're going to be hearing a lot about the Precursors. Anyways, the Precursors in the Jack and Dexter series, basically, they're this long-lost ancient civilization. Their artifacts just litter the lands. Though, while you, though, funnily enough, while you get a notification for getting all the orbs in an area, in an area, you actually don't get any sort of fanfare for getting all the power cells, even though the power cells are by far the more important collectible. Which, by the way, there are 101 power cells in the game. And we are going to be getting all of them. However, I will not be getting all of the Precursor Orbs just because you really, you get no reward for doing so. And it's not even necessary to get everything. So, yeah, we'll go to the Green Sage's Hut, the Green Sage's Hut, the Green Sage's Hut, or the Green Sage's Hut. There's also the Hidden Fifth location, the Green Sage's Hut. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. And in no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! 
Now, anyways, you probably noticed this little Easter egg to the Crash to the Crash series, where basically, yeah, Samos actually has a has an Insanity Island piranha plant just sitting casually in his area. Some brave adventurers you two are. Back already and without clearing my block eco harvesters. They're on the far side of the beach, boys. Now, get moving. Yeah, anyways, there are no subtitles in this version of the game. Apparently, the developers, they didn't want to put in subtitles because they thought that it would kind of ruin the immersion, which I can get. Though it kind of also makes it where just some lines can be a little indiscernible. Some brave I didn't know Samus would actually repeat that again. Already and without clearing my block eco harvesters. They're on the far side of the beach, boys. Now, get moving! Yeah, you know what, Samus? We'll save that for last. We'll save that for Power Cell number 101. Anyways, Kira, she'll also give you f feedback as to just what you can do to help out get Power Cells. Hey, baby. What do you say you and I go cruising on this A-Grab Zoomer? Rule number one. I don't date animals. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Listen, if you need something to keep you busy, my father always talked about an ancient precursor pipeline hidden deep underground. Some of these pipes end in vents from which eco flows freely, and some have been capped off so that the eco is sealed back. There must be a way to turn the capped vents on. I traced part of the pipeline back to the Forbidden Temple. Maybe you should look there for some type of switch. So anyways, Kira and Samos, by them giving that sort of feedback to you, they will tell you about just different missions that you'll get when you actually get to the areas. Basically, as you can see, we already have a mission for, Sa for Sentinel Beach, which we, which basically gives us a lead about what we can do. So anyways, welcome to the first hub, Sandover Village. Now, Sandover Village, there is something fascinating about the soundtrack. Where basically, for the most part, the soundtrack does sound very similar throughout the entire village. However, in certain locations, you have it where there is a different, there are some slight variations. For example, go to the fisherman's house, and you hear a bit more of a synthy effect in certain parts of the soundtrack. Hey, it looks like scout flies are always in red boxes. Likewise, if you go to the mayor's house, you'll hear more of a horn section. It's really interesting. Basically, I didn't and I didn't even know that until I actually started looking into it when I was doing that one ultimate Sandor village mashup years ago So anyways, ah, I'm not, I am not doing well with I never do well with finding the thing with finding the scout flies in Sandor village Basically, yeah, just Trying our hands on there are scout flies in every section of the game. Basically every area has seven scout flies no exceptions and everyone has a woe in Sandor Village. Everyone has issues. Hey! Little furry dude! Oh, I thought for a moment you were my muse. You're what? Haven't you ever seen a muse before? It's a little glowing squirrel about your size, full of spunk, and crazy as a lark. Oh, I get it. Like a sidekick. As a matter of fact, without my muse, I just can't sculpt. But with her around, I see beauty in everything, you know? Right now, I couldn't chisel my way out of a box. I think she ran away to that misty island. Oh, I just hope she's all right. It's worth a power cell if you bring her back to me. Wait a minute. We are not going back to Misty Island. Are we? You know it, Daxter. Yeah, though, are you sure that's not an it? Are you sure you're just not referring to your bag of weed? Because seriously, just, I yeah, just ultimate plot twist of the century. Just, the muse is not real. The mule, the muse has never existed. The muse only disappeared because the, because basically the, the, eh, the sculptor got sober. Did you see the size of the bite that Lurker Shark took out of the fisherman's boat? <sighs> We best stay way clear of them. I don't think we can tackle a creature that dag nasty. So yeah, basically, that is your hint of to what happens if you try to swim too far out into water. 
basically to block you off from going to areas where you shouldn't go and to keep you contained a lurker shark will emerge and will eat you whole so anyways let's go and talk to jack's uncle well uh, hello there my dear boy you caught me at a most inopportune moment uh, i wish to set off on my journey yesterday but i seem to be a spot short on the old precursor orbs i would have pledged my word that i had 90 of them but i gather that your young friend you know the little annoying miserably ugly one might have just pilfered them as a sort of a spot of fun anyway uh, would you be kind enough to loan your dear old uncle 90 precursor orbs so he can get underway i would offer you a power cell in return so anyways one thing that i've always loved about this game it's just how much it immerses you in the world, even though the world doesn't ex isn't exactly the most complex of places. Because, for example, right here we have some maps of the world. This is the area that we're currently at. As you can see, this right here is Sandor Village. This right here is Geyser Rock. This right here is the, is the temple that Kira was telling us about. Here is Sentinel Beach. But if you go to this other map, it's actually for the end of the game. Let's see. So anyways. Where should I go first? <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, just it even boil it even bleeds over into the instruction manual, which for this game was just a big poster. That uh, and was a map of the world as well. So anyways, let's go into the mayor's house. <laughs> Don't tell me that you two have problems as well. The first I hear of monster sightings near the village, and now this. See those gears up there, boy. See them? See how they're not moving? That means our village had no power. The eco beam coming from the jungle temple has been interrupted. Boys, everyone's too frightened to go out and, and find out what's happened. Did you pay the bill? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, 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 you're funny. Now look, if you two fix the eco beam, I'll give you a power cell. Oh, oh and, and another thing, if by any chance you're interested in making a contribution to my re-election campaign, I, I might be willing to part with yet another power cell. The minimum contribution is, a, oh, a very modest 90 precursor orbs. Yeah, so basically, just who's going to run up against this guy? This village has pretty much no one. Just, we got the, we have the, the we have the high artist. We have basically the bird lady who lives in this house. We got the farmer over there, the narcoleptic farmer who pretty much sleeps at all times of the day. Wh who is going to run up against this guy? Yeah, Jack's uncle. I mean, I, I could easily imagine Jack's uncle definitely coming and swinging. Good yourself, lady. Oh, sorry. I thought you were a spotted orange bellied rain drake. You know, yesterday I saw some terribly vicious creatures capture a mother blood plot near the beach. Now there's this poor little orphan egg sitting in a nest at the top of the cliff, and I can't get to it. If you could climb up there and push it off, I've piled some hay down at the beach to catch it safely. Do an old lady a favor, and I'll give you a power cell. Though, really, just what is she staring at? Because she is not staring at any bird. Basically, just her window is right at a rock wall. She is staring at a rock. Actually, actually, no. She's staring at some wall. She's staring at the fisherman's house. She's spying on the fisherman. Actually, no. She's spying on Jack's uncle. What was she? A stand for Jack's uncle? She's warm for his form? She wants to see him in a big bird costume? <laughs> She's got her tastes, and darn it, she wants to enforce them. Actually, no, the fisherman, I can imagine the fisherman definitely being the most viable candidate for mayor, basically. The most, the biggest threat to the mayor of Sandor Village. Yeah, gotta bring in the crops from the tree. Mm, gotta milk those yak cows. Gotta milk those yak cows. Oh, it's you. Oh, just resting my tired bones. 
I've been trying to get those Henri Eccles back into the pen all day. Some strange creatures tried to steal them earlier. You think you could help an old man try to get him back into the corral? Gaul's goals are beyond just, are beyond comprehension. He's stealing cattle. He's stealing birds. What, is he trying to get a breakfast buffet going? It's all part of the plan. First we take the E cup. First we take the birds. Then we take the cows. Excuse me. Then we take down Denny's and IHOP. And then we get the eco. And then the world. Yeah, remember kids, don't do dark eco. Otherwise, you'll try you'll start kidnapping farm you'll start kidnapping farm assets. Okay, so anyways, this is a pretty simple power cell. All you need to do is just hit the yak cows and herd them in. So yeah, as to this farmer, he's always resting. You never see this farmer moving. This guy is always sleeping. In the middle of the night, he's asleep. In the middle of the day, he's asleep. I'm pretty sure that we could kind of constitute him as being comatose at this point. Okay, so anyways, let's just whap this cow in. That lazy farmer owes us a power cell. Let's go talk to him. Yeah, we got him. Ah, well done, my boy. You actually got those flea bags back into the pen. Now I can sleep in peace. Take this power cell for your trouble. Okay, yeah, so we're all good there. Okay, five scout flies. We should be nearing our goal. We should be nearing the goal pretty soon. Okay, I'm just a little paranoid right now. I'm thinking, oh great, am I missing a scout fly? But then again, I mean, we're gonna be coming back to Sandor anyways. Okay. So anyways, this part, back in the day, funny thing about this area, what? I did not know... Check out that funky sculpture sitting on a rocks over there. I did not know how to get that oracle back in the day. I was like, how am I going to get there? Because if you try a double jump, you don't make it. You cannot make it over there with just a simple double jump. And this is where the game's basic tutorial kind of starts to fail you, because you need to start using actual mechanics, basically. You can either get to there through one of two ways. You can either just do a spin jump, which basically Jack gains a little height, and he basically, and he gets a little distance, or you can roll jump. Yeah, personally, roll jump is more of a high risk, high reward sort of thing, because basically just Jack has to be committed to the roll. It's not like in Mario 64 or Mario Galaxy where you can pretty much just long jump from a near standstill. You only need a little motion with Jack. Right. He does need a substantial amount of space in order to do the roll. In this, area. this must be a precursor oracle like the sage always goes on about. I hope they weren't as ugly. Who awakens the oracle? Wait, one of you has the light within. From before time, I have watched and waited for the true hero to return. Present to me. 120 precursor orbs for each power cell I contain. Okay, so basically, every hub world is going to have two oracle missions, basically. Bring 120 orbs to the oracle, just 240 in total, with a varying amount of 90 orbs. Basically, all in all, just if you go, if you want to use, spend your orbs on power cells, the 90 orb missions are where it's at, because basically it's a better deal. Though with the oracles, it's a there's a little more stability with them. Bring to me 120 precursor orbs, and I will award you a power cell. What's that smell? It smells like a marker. Why is there a marker smell in my area? It smells like a marker mixed with vinegar. But anyways, on that note, I think that now would be a good time to end things off. I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye.